What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Basketball. Today, we've got a really fun video. Basically, every single year in the NBA, a survey goes out to all the GMs just being like, hey, who do you think the best players? Who do you think is going to win the finals this year? All these random questions that we all ask ourselves as fans. And so today, I want to dive into it. I think it gives us a lot of interesting insights on like what's actually going on in the minds of the GMs because they can't vote for their own teams, right? So they have to vote for somebody. And I don't know. I think it's an interesting discussion topic. So hey, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and comment. I've responded to every single comment on my YouTube channel up to this point and I intend to keep on doing so. Okay, let's get into it. All right, now hold up, hold up, hold up. Before we get into the actual GM survey, I've got an important announcement for you guys. This survey right here, we've actually gone and created our own version of it here. We've got a Google survey that each one of you can go and fill out. I basically want the viewers to fill this out and give me your takes on this. Um, you guys can use the link. It's in the description down below. Uh, go click on it, fill this out, submit it, and then we'll go over the answers of what our community thinks in comparison to this at a later date maybe in like a week or two or something like that so hey make sure you guys go fill it out and everything this will probably be a two-part video because there's a lot of questions so you'll have some time but go answer the survey and everything let's let's hear from you guys and I want to give a special shout out to our Discord here as well. Our very own Matrix here. He's a very active person on our Discord. Actually went through and made the survey. So Ma Matrix, thank you very much. I know you're a very uh, avid viewer of the channel. So thank you. But also just a reminder, the Discord's always in the description as well. We are talking about stuff every single day, every single night, uh, going into details about everything that's going on in the NBA. So make sure you guys hop on. But all right, let's go. Let's go tackle the survey. All right. So let's actually start talking about the survey. Uh, like I like I mentioned, uh, they they pulled all all the all the GMs they're like hey you can't vote for any players or any of your own teams or anything like that you just have to vote on what's going on I think this gives us good insight into the minds of GMs and if anything else it'll inspire some good conversations so like first question here who's going to win the 2025 NBA finals 83 percent of GMs said the Boston Celtics not surprised 13 percent Oklahoma City then the Dallas Mavericks three percent last year it was the Boston Celtics and Denver Nuggets both at 33 percent was the tie so most people are feeling like Boston's going to repeat this year I would have to imagine kind of the same thing if you guys are looking at like this this is how they imagine like the conference rankings to go so we, we can talk about that and um I believe they just did this as like a singular vote I don't think they did rank choice voting they might have done it for this yeah okay so that's this is how they actually did they might have done rank choice voting for this one if you guys aren't familiar rank choice voting is like the only real appropriate way to pull something basically you get a certain amount of points for picking something first second third and last obviously diminishing values it's how our actual like political system should work if you wanted the best outcome every single time but we have the electoral college which is just complete nonsense so you know what is what it is i'm not going to get too political on a friday but no surprise here to see um Boston at 83%. Funny enough, I would actually put the Knicks second. I think the Knicks are going to be like that good this year. They just seem like they're poised to do it. I don't feel comfortable enough putting like the Thunder that high yet just for how young of a team that they are. Dallas would probably be my third team as well, but no surprise here that we expect to see Boston towards the end of it. Um, Just looking at the conference rankings, Boston, New York, Philly, Cleveland, Milwaukee, a little bit low in my mind, but I totally understand it. Orlando, maybe a little high in my opinion as well, but I'm not tripping about it either. Indiana down to seven. Very interesting. Oklahoma City first with Minnesota, then Denver, Dallas. I, I would maybe switch those to Phoenix. Um, Minnesota still this high. Like when was this actually pulled? Do we know when this was pulled? Um, I don't see anything on there because I'd find this very interesting if this happened uh uh, pre or post Carl Anthony Towns trade because I feel like this maybe drops Minnesota below like a Dallas slash Denver just just my opinion at the end of the day but is what it is um interesting players who's gonna win the 2024-2025 MVP 40% of people said Shea that's actually a surprise to me not that like Shea gets votes but I'm surprised that it's that high I I would have guessed Luka or Jokic or Embiid but everybody likes the new name right that's that's how I feel like it always goes with Jason Tatum being tied for third people also receiving votes Giannis Jalen Brown Ant yep that makes sense with uh Jokic being the heavy favorite last year and well not too bad of a guess right not too bad of a guess if you were starting a franchise today how or if you were starting a franchise today and could sign any player in the NBA, who would it be? By the way, y'all, I'm getting about two hours of sleep per night because this is the busy time for my personal business. So if I'm slurring my words or just sound nonsensical, that's why you boys just sleep deprived. Um, so if we're starting a franchise today, who would it be? The fact that this isn't like 100% 
is kind of crazy to me. I, I know Jokic is the best player. Shea is that good, and he's young as well. Luka's there as well. It just seems like Victor's just coming for the league, man. It just seems like he's that good. So that makes total sense to me, and I guess it wouldn't be 100% because you couldn't vote for yourself. But nonetheless, Wimbanyama is the obvious choice. I'm not surprised by the other ones. Last year, it was just Jokic. Um, that's interesting. I bet you Wemby still had some votes last year if we were to go and check. Um, but nonetheless, I, I'd be shocked to see anything other than Wemby. But by the way, for all of these, like, leave me your comments and go fill out our actual survey as well. I, I can't wait to see what you guys uh, actually come up with. Uh, which player forces opposing coaches to make the most adjustments? Luca? that doesn't come as any surprise. I mean... You don't necessarily have to do much for the rest of the team, but like Luca himself has so many counter moves and so many different ways to attack things. Like he's very much a unique player in that sense. Steph Curry, yeah, nobody, there's just nobody else that plays like Steph Curry, right? And it's it's not just what he can like that he can shoot that well, right? It's how much he's moving, the different spots he knows to go to, just the way he reads the game doesn't surprise me. Jokic, yeah. I see that's kind of interesting to me because like it's almost like how do you take his teammates away even more so because like yeah he's gonna go get his buckets and everything like that but you almost don't want to double team because his passing is so good right and so I guess I'm already starting to game plan for him so I guess that's true Giannis yeah that's just one that you have to physically plan for and then Joel Embiid yeah this one doesn't surprise me I don't think it's that hard to make that a ton of adjustments for him but he's definitely a different play style with curry being the number one guy last year that's that's fair which player is most likely to have a breakout season in 20, 2024 2025 this is basically the most improved player thing jalen williams from oklahoma city that's that's who i had kind of being my most improved player this year so i'm in complete uh conjuncture with that one evan mobley i would love to see that we all see the uh, talent there. John Morant, yep, would love to see him take another leap. He's already phenomenal, but would love to see it. Victor, yep, we could see him go further. Paulo, Cade was a sleeper that I had. I really like that. Brandon Miller, a lot's going to ride on the coaching staff, so that doesn't surprise me. Um, Other people we see, LaMelo, Ant, Derek Lively, that one would maybe surprise me a little bit. Tyrese Maxey, Trey Murphy, by the way, uh, this is just fresh off the cuff of, um, I, I just closed the Discord, but they're talking about it in there right now. Apparently, Herb Jones is going to play center for New Orleans this year. It's like, oh my goodness, I guess... Guess we'll see how that goes, but Trey Murphy made me think of that. Keegan Murray, that one I could see. Andrew Nemhard, uh, he's got a little bit to go in my opinion. Shen Goon, yep, he's fun. Uh, Cam Thomas, I doubt it. Amen Thompson, I could see it. Asar Thompson, I could see it. How long is Asar Thompson out for? I don't know, but last year was Anthony Edwards, and man, were they right. Man, were they right. Next up, this is where it starts getting a, a little more positional. Who is the best point guard? in the NBA. And so this is kind of subjective, right? Because, and this is the same way with how our survey works. Like, what do you define as a point guard? It's kind of hard to tell. I usually say it's somebody that's like, I, I always think of people positionally as who they're gonna guard on defense. Like, I always think of Luka as a two, cause like Kyrie's gonna guard the one and he's gonna guard the two most likely. And honestly, Luka sometimes guards uh, like a three or four that doesn't move much or sits in the corner as well. But like positionally, if, positionally, if we were to match everybody up in a certain way, that's how I tend to think about things. But you know, it's not a perfect rule of thumb and it really doesn't matter that much anyway. But I'm curious to see. Luka, yeah, I would probably say it's him Shay uh yeah him and uh Steph I'd probably put them on very similar tiers I might still put Steph Curry above but Luka Doncic is 37 percent uh Jalen Brunson rightfully so up on this list as well last year it was clearly Steph Curry and that doesn't surprise me at all Luka garnered a lot of attention this year so did Shay obviously both of them being MVP type candidates two of the three probably most impossible to guard guys in the NBA probably one of the other ones is like Kyrie in my opinion so yeah not surprised Jalen Jalen Brunson, just absolutely phenomenal. Is there anybody else we'd really like to throw on that list? I can't necessarily think of someone. I feel like you got the right guys here. Moving on to best shooting guards. Anthony Edwards at 33%. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me, and I would tend to agree with this too. I mean, if Luka Doncic is a shooting guard, which is... Again, like offensively, probably not, but like defensively, that's my, that might be where I put him. So that's probably why you don't see more votes for Luca. Like Luca is the best player on this list right here, but I, I feel like most people see him as a point guard, at least in this aspect. But man, yeah, Anthony Edwards, like compared to some of these other guys, yep, I'd put him here. Love Devin Booker. Shea, I've never really seen him as a two, so that's an interesting one. Same with curry i'd like to know what gm is voting for that but is what it is people also receiving bro votes jalen brown could see that Derek white interesting interesting Derek white that many huh 
is it <laughs> JJ Reddick's not a uh, not a GM, so I don't know who's voting for that one. Uh, best small forwards in the NBA, and what I based my thumbnail off of, I don't know, it wasn't the best thumbnail ever. Um, I, I told you, your boy's busy right now. He's busy. Uh, Jason Tatum, number one. That's interesting to me. Um, I would disagree with that. 47%. Like, Jason Tatum is really, really good. I would not say he's the number one small four, but that's which depending on what else you consider. They also some people have Luca here. Don't see Luca as that. Kevin Durant, I see as that position. Um, so I'd put him above there. I feel like the small forward position is so subjective. So that might be part of what's influencing these votes. Is like Jason Tatum seems like a clear small forward, but even still, I guess when you look at like the starting lineup that the Celtics throw out, he plays the four technically, which again, the two through four a lot of times are very switchable nowadays in basketball, but like I'd technically put like Kevin Durant above him. I'd put LeBron above him, right? I mean, I mean hell, if Luke is in the conversation, he's above them all, but it is what it is. But yeah, no, Jason Tatum should be there. Jalen Brown, another one. Last year, it was Jason Tatum, 47% again. Interesting. People are standing by that. All right. Who's the best power forward in basketball? Giannis clearly uh, falls into this one. Yep. Makes sense. Kevin Durant. Yep. Nope. I got no argument with these whatsoever. People also receiving votes. Anthony Davis. That dude hasn't played power forward in what feels like forever. Draymond Green. Who's saying Draymond Green at this point? I love Draymond Green, but no. Domas Sabonis. I'd say he's pretty clearly a center. Uh, Jason Tatum. I can understand that. Uh, Victor Wenbanyama. Hmm. I know he played power forward to start the season, but I don't, I don't know. I, f I wonder if some people think about these uh, votes as like, uh, okay, like um, if this guy were to play power forward, would he be the best, right? So like if Victor was the power forward, would he be the best? And they said yes. So, you know, maybe, maybe that's the way to look at it. Who's the best center? This one's interesting, right? Uh, Nikola Jokic, Joel Embiid. Yep. It's, it's always going to be those two. And then Victor Wenbanyama. I would... I would tend to agree with this. I'm, I'm curious who voted for Wemby in this case, but uh, I'm not surprised Jokic is that much higher than Embiid. Embiid is phenomenal, but I just think Jokic is just in a tier all his own at this point, man. That dude is that dude is so good. All right, it looks like we're moving on to offseason moves. Which team made the best overall moves this offseason? 37% say the Oklahoma City Thunder, obviously trading Josh Giddy to bring in Caruso and going out and signing Hartenstein, which was an obvious need for them. Looks like they're bringing him off the bench, which makes sense. I couldn't comprehend the whole Chet Hartenstein lineup that just didn't make sense to me. Shout out Dagnalt for doing a logical thing. Uh, the Philadelphia 76ers, obviously, they went and got Paul George. They went in and brought some other really quality uh, players uh, with uh, Martin, obviously, coming in, bringing in guys like Eric Gordon as well. I think were really nice moves. So, yep, no, Philly. Philly had a good offseason in that sense. The Knicks, yeah. Do you put the Knicks as, like, number one? Maybe. Like, I know they gave up a good amount to go get some of these guys. Like, you know, honestly, they really didn't give up like a ton to go get Cap, but like bringing in bridges, right? And just maneuvering to go get those guys and just the way they executed the moves. I would say, I would say the Knicks. Um, I was going to say, um, Brook the Brooklyn's another one that I would have said. Uh, um, so I'm glad they got some votes because they did the right thing this offseason. They probably should have sold more and then maybe they get even more votes. But the Orlando Magic, what did they. What did they do? They didn't really do anything, right? So they went and got KCP, so they're giving them credit for that. I No, they should have gone out and got a point guard. But, like, I like KCP, too. And then the Kings? I don't think the DeMar DeRozan trade, and I talked about this before, is, like, a super ground-breaking move, but I think it's a good move. So I don't know. I'm not sure I necessarily see them there. Uh, last year, they had the Boston Celtics. Yeah, it was no question. And the Milwaukee Bucks. That was fresh off the Dame trade and the Porzingis trade and everything. So yeah, no question at all. Which one player acquisition will make the biggest impact? Paul George. I mean, yeah, he's probably the best player that was moved. Uh, Bridges from New York. Yep. No, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think. And like in terms of like individual impact, is that how we're looking at it or just biggest improvement to the team? I mean, I'd still say it was Paul George, but like Towns and Bridges. Yeah, I mean, they're just the best players. And Alex Crusoe tends to just make a good impact wherever he goes. DeMar DeRozan, like, like I said, I'm not actually sure how he's going to fit into Sacramento's offense. I just I don't know. Uh, Hartenstein will be a big deal just because hopefully they won't get beat off the glass so much more this season. So... I don't know. That's that that one probably could be a little bit higher, but I know he's not like a starter like some of the uh, some of these other guys. Last year they said Damian Lillard at 47%. And this is something I want you guys to keep perspective of, right? 
one like not as good season which by the way we had a whole discussion on the discord about like Damian Lillard and like how good he like actually still is and we backed it up with like a bunch of analytics I did a whole study with everybody in there it was really really cool that night um but just remember just last year Damian Lillard was seen as like a messiah like oh my gosh this guy's amazing so like just remember that it takes a lot of time to adjust to new places and a lot of things happen in people's personal lives outside of basketball so just remember how good Damian Lillard still is all right don't don't give up on this dude just yet uh who is the most underrated player acquisition like Caruso feels like an obvious answer uh KCP um I I, I actually really struggle to th think that uh kcp is going to be as productive in orlando as he was in denver just because there's not going to be as many people like actually actively like setting him up and creating for him because he doesn't create his own offense you know and nobody else in orlando really does so i'm a little bit concerned with him not having like a lebron or a Jokic around him like how much can he really contribute he's still going to be a good shooter he's still going to be a good defender most likely but i don't know about that hartenstein probably a little bit underrated it was a big deal at the time though the tyus jones one is honestly a big one uh not surprised to see clay thompson there i think chris paul isn't a really underrated one kyle anderson no, I wouldn't necessarily say that. DiVincenzo to Minnesota. Okay, so this was post-cat trade. Oh, yeah, I should have realized that by the Carl Anthony Towns Knicks thing. So that was interesting that they had Minnesota that high still. Um, Josh Giddy in Chicago. I... I don't know if it's an underrated one. I I think it was maybe an underappreciated move, so I guess it kind of fits that category. Caleb Martin in Philly. Yeah, Gary Trent Jr. in Milwaukee. Sure, last year, Marcus Smart. Ooh, that one didn't turn out to be true, did it? But, hey... What's it going to be, right? Uh, which team will be the most improved in 2024, 2025? The Memphis Grizzlies. That's an easy one, right? Because like that team, if healthy, is a playoff team and probably like, uh, well, I don't even want to say they're a top seeded team. They're like one through eight of uh, maybe even one through 10 of like the West just seems like they could be contenders, honestly. But just the fact that they were so injured and bad last year and hopefully they won't be this season, even though we saw John ja Morant go down with like two ankle injuries already. And uh, Gigi Jackson and Vince Williams are already down, too. So I, I don't know. But like the Grizzlies seem like an obvious choice. I don't think the Spurs will be that much better. Uh, we keep referencing this thing in the Discord about like how um, a player of like Wemby's uh, stature and like him being that good defensively, usually a team makes the playoffs when they have a player that's that good. So I guess that alone could suggest like, okay, that's that good of an improvement, right? So maybe the Sixers, Sixers were really good last year. It's just like they, like Embiid went down for a portion of it. I don't know. Also receiving votes, the Detroit Pistons. I find that hard to believe still. The Houston Rockets find that hard to believe as well. The Magic, I wouldn't be surprised if they drop a little bit. The Suns, I could see being improved last year. Oklahoma City Thunder, and man, were they right about that. What was the most surprising move of the offseason carl anthony towns to new york feels like the obvious one i don't think many of us saw that one coming at all uh, i remember being at a wedding that night and just checking my phone and all like i hadn't checked it for like two and a half hours and i was like oh my gosh what i miss and i was like oh wow cat got traded and everyone was talking about it. i live in minneapolis and so everyone was like cat got traded cat got traded and i was like whoa paul george to philly that one felt like a done deal from the beginning at least in my opinion not surprised by that derozan to the kings no, that one doesn't come as a surprise to me either, just because, like, we knew there was a pretty good chance DeRozan wasn't going to come back. So, I don't know. Uh, Bridges to New York, that doesn't surprise me whatsoever. Risa Shea being drafted number one? Mm, no, it was going to be him or Sar. We were pretty confident about that. It's just Sar didn't want to work out for the Hawks. And so then we're like, okay, I guess it's Risa Uh The Denny to Portland one. Yeah, this one should be higher. Like, why the hell did they do that trade? I know I've like ripped on Washington enough, which like, by the way, I had a buddy send me some clips from the Wizards game the other night. Uh, they already don't have Brogdon for the season. And so like Poole's playing point guard. They had like 30 turnovers in that preseason game. They looked so out of sorts. And this is like their starters playing. My buddy's like an NBA scout. And he's sending me these clips. He's like, bro, what is Washington running out there? I was like, dude, no clue. This this team looks goofy right now. So sorry, Wizards fans. Might be might be another long season. But like, why the hell did they trade Denny? They finally had someone that was starting to develop and play well, and they just traded him. No idea why. He's on a great contract too. Tyus Jones to Phoenix. No, I it's not, I wouldn't say it's a surprising move. Caleb Martin, I just don't think we thought about it that much. DeJounte Murray to New Orleans, no, wasn't a surprise. Clay Thompson to Dallas, it just felt surreal more than anything else. But the Holiday Lillard trades, those were those were pretty crazy last year. I'm not surprised by that. Rookies and international, who will win the 2024-25 Rookie of the Year? 50% of people say Reed Shepard. 
that that's a shock to me. That is a shock. Reed Shepard's like he he was like the sixth man the other night in the rotation. One thing that you guys should know, because I, I had somebody ask me a really good question uh, in the Discord. Somebody was like, hey, how much do you read into like uh, preseason? and everything and I said uh you can read a little bit into preseason actually it's not like some other sports like you can get a really good idea for like rotations and stuff and individual player skills teams are going to run a decent amount of like the offense that they've been trying to run they're not going to run it at the same pace and everything but I, I don't know I think you can get a good sense of rotation and play styles and things like that in a preseason I just wouldn't judge things too much when certain players are missing obviously but Nonetheless, it's interesting. So Reed Shepard was like a six man in their rotation the other night, but they also had a couple other guards not playing. So I don't know when they had everybody roll in the one night. He was like eighth, ninth man. So I, I, I just struggle to see where he gets minutes. Uh, Zach Eady feels like it could be a good one just because we know they're going to have to give him minutes. Uh, Stefan Castle's been looking pretty solid. The three point shooting is still scary, uh, but we knew that was going to be the case. But he's got a lot of other things and Vassell's out for the start of the season, so he might get more burn. Ron Holland, I don't see any way personally. Alex Sar has been looking good in preseason, but no Rissache. How? How? Like how? And also you saw like Rissache looks pretty polished that's what I was trying to tell people coming in I'm like no like he's gonna be a pretty polished player and like Sar I think as well I don't think Sar is gonna be as good of a scorer as like Reese Ache is but like you know I, I don't see either of them as future all-stars one day but no I think Sar and uh, Reese Ache were the best like two players to go draft in this class and that's how that's how they should be looked at which rookie will be the best player in five years Reed Shepard wow people love Reed Shepard man I hope so I really do hope so that'd be really really cool Again, struggle to see him getting on the court. Stefan Castle very well could be if he developed a jump shot because, man, he's got everything else going for him. It's just that jump shot is not pretty right now. Reese like, sure, he very well could be. Um, I would like to see, what, it's five years from now? I'd like to see Salon on here. They don't have Salon on here. I think Salon, uh, to John Salon from the, that uh, Charlotte took, I think he's got the highest ceiling of anybody in the draft, if you guys were curious. Just the way he moves at his size, I'm not convinced he's only six nine too he looks way bigger out there like the way that he can move and uh like ignore like just the fact that he's like hitting threes and stuff right now it's just it's the movement it's the ability to put the ball on the ground get to certain spots on the court he's so wide and he can fill out so much more like i promise you guys i know that he can get so much bigger and stronger than what he already is he's just got that body for it so i'd like to think he could get there they also have bub carrington interesting like i could see sar falling into that buzelis yeah buzelis has got some interesting potential i don't think klingon has got a super high ceiling but i think he's got a very uh, nice floor ron holland ton of talent so yeah dalton connect not so sure about that one as much but fair enough last year it was uh victor Wenbanyama, and five years ago this is a good one to compare it to it was zion williamson at 70 percent. so wow has zion been around for that long now tells me i've been out of march madness for that long now and that's Man, that's crazy. I'm getting old. Which rookie was the biggest steal and where was he selected in the draft? Like, I don't feel like they had to ask the back part of this question, but Bub Carrington being a steal at 14. I was surprised Bub went that high. So I don't know about that. This one's pretty divisive, actually, it looks like. So that doesn't surprise me. Devin Carter at 13. No, it's about where I thought. Johnny Furphy, I, I think that one's a steal because I think Furphy could be a good player. I love his energy. I love his shooting. I love the size that he brings. I like it. Yeah, Connect is an obvious one. Oh, no, it's Terrence Shannon for sure. Terrence Shannon for sure. I... I could have justified picking him with a top three pick. It's just like the legal stuff. Nobody wanted to touch it or whatever. Topic, I don't have a strong enough opinion. Still need more film. Buzelis, maybe. Klingon, yeah, I'd say you got a good value at seven for Klingon. Uh, Cam Christie, I disagree with. Collier, I'm not a huge fan of. Zach Eady, no, I wouldn't say that at all. Uh, Filipowski, no. McCain, no. Baylor Shireman, maybe a little bit. We'll see. Reed Shepard, three. That's... It's a ballsy one, but okay. And then Cody Williams. Uh, last year was Cam Whitmore. Yeah, that was that was an accurate one. That one was definitely accurate. Um, moving on. Who is the best international player? Uh, you know, it's a global game nowadays. Jokic won, Doncic, and then Wenbin Yama last year was Jokic as well, but pretty evidently Jokic. Um, kind of surprised you don't see Shea on here. People might forget that he's Canadian. These GMs, you never know, but um, kind of surprised to not see him on there, but if we see Wemby as higher than Shea already, I mean, fair enough, I guess. Fair enough. But um, trying to think if there's anybody else I'm evidently missing in this. But nope, 
I don't necessarily think so. Uh, who is the best international player not in the NBA? Interesting. Now, this one, this one is interesting. So, Sasha Venzikov, uh, he was just released after he got traded to Toronto from Sacramento, and he was, like, cut or released or whatever. Not sure where and most of these guys are playing nowadays, but is what it is. Uh, Nikola Miritich, yeah, he's took him forever to get to the NBA. He wasn't here long, but he was a pretty solid player above average for sure could get you 20 points on any given night and then he just decided after um was it bobby portis that hit him or did he hit bobby portis i have to believe bobby portis hit him right that's that's how that happened and then he was like nah i'm good like a lot of the nba teams have offered him contracts but he just loves dominating the euro league uh eddie Tavares, yeah he was in the nba for a little bit kind of and uh nolan uh treore i don't actually know how to say his name it's I, i'm bad at pronouncing things he's going to be in the draft this next year big fan of the lit very i've seen very little bit of film of this next year's draft and we'll, we'll do some draft coverage starting pretty soon but um this draft class looks awesome in the little bit i've seen so far and i really like this kid nolan um i i, st I still don't even have him in like my top four but that's that's how good this class is um uh I don't know how to say his first name, but Musa, we've seen some minutes of him before. Pretty interesting. And then Chetty Osmond. Oh, did he go overseas? Fair enough. Oh, shout out Boban. That's just, I, I love that. I love that. And then Armel uh, Traore, he's he's also in this next class, I believe, right? If I'm remembering correctly, or am I tripping? You guys let me know in the comments. Last year, it was pretty evidently uh, Nikola Miritich. He is getting a little bit older now, so I wouldn't be surprised if Venzikov is uh, the, the favorite amongst people at this point. All right, a couple more questions for this video. Who is the def the best defensive player in the NBA? The answer is Victor Wembanyama. There is no other acceptable answer for this one. I'm sorry. Bam Adebayo, Rudy Gobert. Kind of surprised that him and Bam are at the same level. I'd put Gobert pretty clear above him. Yep, then you get into the Drew Holiday. I'd agree with that. Giannis, yep. Anthony Davis, yep. Herb Jones, those are very appropriate ones. Alex Caruso being another one, yep. McDaniels, yep. He deserves to be up there. Marcus Smart, we haven't seen him in a little bit, but presumably, yes, I would agree. But yeah, I, I can't believe that the Wemby one isn't higher. But I just feel like people don't want to give him his flowers yet. Um, but even just last year, I think he should have won Defensive Player of the Year. I think that would have been a cool thing to have a rookie get that too. Um, and I think he was deserving. Not that Rudy Gobert didn't have an amazing defensive season again last year. He's one of the best defensive players we've ever seen in the NBA. But um, I, I think Wemby is just, he's just that dude. Last year, Giannis. Kind of interesting. Uh, I, not that Giannis is a bad defender. He's a phenomenal defender. But you know, who's the best perimeter defender in the NBA? Um, I, I will just say, I, bef like, before injuries and everything, at once upon a time, I would have told you that this is like Lonzo Ball and Ben Simmons. Like, that's who I would have said. And probably throw, like, a Drew Holiday into there. That's what I would have said some, like a couple years ago when those two guys were like still really relevant but nowadays drew holiday yep we'd probably agree with that alex jones or alex did i just say alex jones? i told you guys i have not slept more than two hours in a night for probably like a week and it's going to continue throughout all of october so just prepare yourself i'm gonna say some crazy shit. alex caruso Okay, we made it through that word, Con two words. Congratulations, ABC. Um, yeah, no, I'd probably put Herb Jones in front of him, but yeah, no, Caruso is very high up there. Lou Dort, the Dortcher Chamber, I would tend to agree. I'd maybe have McDaniels a little bit higher than that. Uh, OG Ananobi up there, yep. McDaniels, I'd probably put higher. Marcus Smart, Derek White, yeah. Derek White, low-key, one of the best transition defenders ever. I can't imagine that's a question they asked, but that's what I would have said. Drew Holiday getting a little bit more than uh, he did this, this season um, in the previous year so good perspective there who's the best interior defender again this should be higher it should just be Wemby obviously it's just the same people voting uh, again in this one but uh Wemby yep I think clear number one then Rudy I would agree with that uh Anthony Davis yep bam who else is getting votes Giannis Jaron Jackson fouls a bit too much so I'm not always sure but last year being Jaron Jackson I mean He's shown how good of a defender he could be. Who else would we maybe put into this? Like a Walker Kessler or something like that? If healthy, I think he could probably find himself in that conversation. Otherwise, like who else are we really thinking for this? I feel like I feel like this is a pretty good list for this one. Um, who's the most versatile defender in the NBA? Giannis. I would. Yeah. No, he seems like the obvious one. I would then put Drew Holiday and then Wemby, in my opinion. So I feel like Drew's a little low. Like OG deserves to be on the list, that's for sure. But like I, I I'm not scared if I switch Wemby onto a guard. I'm just not. Jonathan Isaac's a really good answer for this. That is a phenomenal answer. Herb Jones, 100%. Jade McDaniel's. Not surprised that this one. Um, 
is so spread out just because it's hard to measure stuff like this and also there just are a lot of guys that can do a lot of this stuff so shout out these guys these are great defenders a uh, caruso yeah, I'd say so. I don't necessarily want Lou Dort and Caruso getting switched on to bigs too much, but I'm not tripping. Aaron Gordon's an interesting one. I don't mind that. Evan Mobley's a really good answer, in my opinion. I don't know about Marcus Smart or Jalen Williams. Not saying that they're not good defenders, because they are, but I don't know if I'd say they're the most versatile. But I get what they're saying. Uh, and then final question for this video. Which is the best defensive team in the NBA? People are saying the Celtics. I'd be inclined to believe that as well. They have probably the best like de defensive uh, guard duo you can have. Tatum and Brown are very good defenders, and Porzingis is a good defender in himself when he's healthy. So I, I would, I'd probably agree with that. Minnesota, yep, is probably not far behind. Like I could see them being better uh, just overall as a team. So not surprised there. Oklahoma City, I don't know if I'd put them as high as maybe like some other team. Like, like. Uh, it's hard to say exactly like certain teams when they lock in i feel like can be like so good defensively like maybe you throw like the orlando magic into that or something like that i feel like they could really be locked down defensively this year again so i don't know if i'd put uh oklahoma city there they do have the a really nice uh they call it a funnel in uh in like high level basketball terms basically and this is why you sometimes saw giddy get out of position with okc and people were like oh he's not a good perimeter defender no they're actually like banking on people going a certain direction but if not they just funnel people into chet because they know he can handle it defensively so just know that they're running a pretty interesting system like that but anyway we're going to cover the second half of these in another video coming if not this weekend early next week a reminder go fill out the, our survey like go give us your results and everything and then we'll compare our answers to what we had in um in this video but seriously no thank you to those of you that helped make the survey go join the discord go fill out the survey and yeah we'll talk to you guys later thanks so much bye